the next thing on the agenda is a financial update. We have a presentation from Mayor Narkowitz um, uh, on with, with a financial update on the impact of COVID-19 on the current budget, next year's, the development of next year's budget, the implementation of the override from uh, March 3rd, which feels like 40 years ago at this point, um, and the, the impact on the capital improvement plan. Um, and we also have Finance Director Susan Wright with us, um, who will present the third quarter financial report. So, um, Mayor Narkowitz, I don't know whether you or Susan would like to present first. Um, I think I can present first, and um, and then if there are, you know, then we can. I know it's later in the agenda for the for the quarterly report, but we can we can talk about that as well and go through that. I, I don't. I think you'll find that there's not a lot of information in those, um, but. So if Laura would be willing to start the presentation, I know you miss my PowerPoints. You've missed my PowerPoints all these months. So little yeah. did I know I'd be um, having to do a PowerPoint. I thought those days were behind me for a little while, but I thought it would be easier to just kind of put this information um, into a presentation. So um, I'll let Laura get that started. Um, can you see it? Here. I can, you just have to start the slideshow. Okay, um, here we go. It, are you seeing it? We are, yes. Um, I think oh, it, is there, there's not audio, right? It's just. No, it's not. But um, typically with a presentation, you go click on slideshow up at the top on the menu. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. From beginning. You can say from the cool. beginning. All right. There gotcha. Go. Thanks. Excellent. Okay. So, um, so uh, you can move to the first. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. So basically I wanna go over um, several things this evening. Um, first and foremost, the impact of this COVID-19 uh, emergency on the fiscal year 2020 budget, which we're still in. Obviously we, um, uh, the, the fiscal year for those watching at home runs through June 30th of uh, 2020. Um, so um, we are now entering the fourth, we've entered the fourth quarter, April, May, and June of fiscal year 2020. Um, we do have third quarter revenue and expenditures, which I'll talk about, and then um, Susan Wright afterwards can go through in, in greater detail through those reports that we submit quarterly. Um, want to talk about the estimated impact on both the third and fourth quarter revenues and expenditures for the general fund. Um, Want to talk to the extent we have information on the potential impacts on state aid uh, in potentially FY20. Uh, 20, but more likely in FY 2021. Um, the status of the five-year capital improvement program, um, and then uh, moving forward, looking forward to the fiscal year 2021 budget, which I am required to submit to the council uh, by May 15th, um, just less than a month away. Um, and again, looking at the potential revenue impact of COVID-19 um, expenditure impact of COVID-19, and then um, uh, uh, going over uh, my intent to delay implementation of the override. So let's go to the first slide, uh, the next slide rather, Laura. So we'll start with the impact on the current fiscal year uh, 2020 budget. Uh, you can go to the next slide. So in terms of third quarter revenues, and you'll, you'll, this is just sort of a 30,000 foot view of those uh, detailed uh, munis printouts, which uh, uh, Finance Director Wright can go through with you um, uh, afterwards. Um, we are showing right now for the third quarter uh, that we're about $365,000 uh, below uh, where we expect it to be. Um, so 71.9% uh, of budgeted revenues have been received um, compared to where we were in the third quarter of 2019, where we had 73.7%. There's several factors that impact, could, could be impacting this. And of course, keep in mind that, um, you know, the, the, the state of emergency in Massachusetts began um, on the uh, 10th of March. Um, and, um, and so, uh, much of the month of much of the month of March is really the, the tail end of uh, third quarter that will be affected. And there are several things. There's the timing of our revenues uh, being processed in city offices because obviously city offices were closed 
for the for most of the second half of March, um, which has delayed some of that revenue um, hitting our books. Um, we've um, extended due dates, as some of you uh, may know. I announced that I would implement, under the authority given by the, the uh, emergency legislation, um, a delay um, in payment due dates uh, for things like uh, real estate and personal property and excise um, and utilities. Um, many of those, in some cases, had um, uh, due dates um, in March or April. Uh, those have now been delayed um, uh, to June 1st, and, and, and we may not see some of the revenues until uh, June 30th. Um, so that also will, will uh, affect our revenues uh, for the third quarter. Um, and then we shut down our parking system uh, shortly after uh, the closure of all city buildings. Um, and so we have uh, seen, with little exception, uh, no parking uh, revenue coming in. Um, so that is significant. And then we've also seen a significant drop in ambulance revenue. Um, uh, uh, President Marcusi referred to it earlier, um, and I think there was even a story about it today um, in Amherst. Um, we have seen uh, a drop off in emergency calls generally. Um, and so that goes for ambulance revenue. So we, our ambulance revenue is about $100,000 uh, behind uh, for the third quarter. So um, even just looking at FY 2020 for the third quarter, uh, we estimate we're about $365,000 behind. The real issue comes as we move into the fourth quarter, which obviously is April, uh, May, and June. Um, oh, dear, dear. Um, you got to go back, um, I, Laura. Oops. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll get it. Now you got to go to slideshow again. Oh, uh, really? From beginning. Uh, yeah, oh, or, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, perfect. Then, That's right where we need to be. Uh, no, uh, now I just go forward up. a couple slides. Yeah. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. So the real impact is going to be in the fourth quarter uh, revenues. Um, and you'll see the top line number there, 1.493 million. Um, uh, so again, the extension of due dates, which will also impact revenues in the fourth quarter. Um, the Again, we project uh, continued park it and parking and ticket revenue losses for April, May, and June. Um, um, with our thinking that with Western Mass sort of behind in terms of our, our curve, um, that this could go on uh, much longer here in, in Western Mass. Um, hotel motel uh, meals, um, while there are some, obviously some meals still happening, um, many sit down restaurants are closed. Obviously some have spun up into delivery, um, but there are still a large number of, uh, of uh, uh, restaurants that have closed. Um, adult use marijuana, has obviously been shut down. It's important to look at the dates also of how the, the actual months of which many of these um, excise taxes are collected. And I talked a lot about this during my town halls, but because of the lag time, so the, the fourth quarter uh, in both in hotel, motel, meals, and adult use, uh, marijuana, are actually for the months of February, March, and April. Um, and again, um, so really, it's about half that quarter that will be affected because about mid-March to the end of April. Um, so, so you know, we're estimating in some cases fifty to thirty-three uh, percent loss of revenue um, for the fourth quarter. Again, extrapolating out the loss of ambulance revenue, um, and then on uh, permits, uh, building, wiring, and plumbing. Uh, while the governor has deemed construction. Um, as essential uh, business, um, there still has been a drop off. Okay. Obviously, people aren't saying, hey, let's renovate that, you know, let's renovate our kitchen right now, or let's, uh, let's put that addition on right now. Um, the kinds of activity that typically might be happening right now um, is not happening. So we're estimating the shortfall there, we're about 86,000. Um, and the other piece, obviously, is just state aid, which we'll continue to talk about. Um, we don't know whether there'll be any impact on uh, on actual FY20 state aid um, in the middle of the fiscal year. We'll, we'll touch on that later. So again, fourth quarter revenues, we're seeing a shortfall of just under 1.5 million. So if you go to the next slide. So um, uh, 
one of these, the slide on the right is actually maybe familiar to you. It's one that we showed as part of our uh, January uh, financial update series to the joint meeting of the city council and school committee. Um, and it's a slide where we look at the fact that um, sort of the sort of the source of revenue um, by all the comparison communities. Um, and we often point out that Northampton, with the exception of Longmeadow, uh, receives the lowest percentage of state aid, um, but um, it is able to rely on one of the largest percentages of local aid, uh, local receipts, um, primarily that we've generated through uh, through the things I just talked about. Um, hot strong hotel motel, strong uh, meals, obviously um, adult use uh, cannabis, um, ambulance, other types of revenue. So you see there, um, you know, 14.25% of our revenue uh, compared to, um, you know, the other communities is local. Um, this is um, a good thing in, in terms, in an environment where we're seeing not a lot of um, state aid and not a lot of increases in state aid. Um, and a fairly small percentage of our budget being uh, funded through state aid. But of course, in this crisis, um, those are the very types of local revenues that have been impacted severely uh, by the COVID-19 shutdown. Over on the left, you see kind of an array of the types of revenue that support the general fund budget. Um, you know, the typical real estate, personal property, uh, chapter 70, charter school, veterans benefits, et cetera. The ones that are in red are really ones that are uh, very sensitive to um, economic uh, forces, and that obviously we're experiencing severe economic forces now: uh, recession, um, some might say uh, depression level. When you look at the unemployment numbers um, that we are seeing um, in terms of percentages, um, but down the line, these are all the types of revenues that we are now. Uh, seeing uh, essentially dry up um, in this uh, COVID-19 emergency. So um, when you add up the FY23 uh, quarter uh, shortfall and the FY20 projected fourth quarter shortfall, um, we, are, we are projecting potentially an estimated revenue loss in the current fiscal year of about uh, 1.8 uh, million or 1, 1, 1,858,000. So um, so that presents challenges in terms of how we finish out uh, the current fiscal year. Um, but it's not just estimated revenue, as we'll see in the next slide. If you could move ahead, Laura. So we also, because we are um, uh, battling this COVID-19 emergency, uh, we are also facing um, many unbudgeted expenses, things that were not part of our budget because we were not um, uh, thinking about a worldwide pandemic back in uh, this time last year when we were creating our budget for FY uh, 2020. Um, now, as has, was noted um, by the health director, um, there, there, there are many expenses that we hope will be reimbursed uh, by the Federal Emergency Management Agency. And we're keeping very close accounting of all of our COVID-19 related expenses. Um, it will be at 75%. Um, and it's unclear um, whether what how many of those expenses uh, will in fact be reimbursed. But you know things like overtime uh, to cover shifts for uh, those that have to that are sick or quarantined, um, essential service, uh, particularly in the area of public safety. Um, we are also uh, seeing our uh, health, fire, rescue, police, and other uh, departmental staff. Um, uh, working uh, long hours and, and in some cases working lots of overtime to try to address uh, this crisis. Um, uh, we're obviously, and that includes, you know, standing up the FEMA reimbursement program, uh, working on the CDBG uh, emergency funding program. Um, we also have additional personnel costs related to the fact that we have many workers who are working um, under, under these emergency order uh, conditions. Um, and they are you know, frontline workers. We're seeing additional costs for PPE. Obviously our PPE supplies have been strained. Disinfectant and cleaning supplies um, that we are using um, uh, our custodians um, to keep our, our buildings uh, clean uh, for those workers that are going in. I, I, uh, Meredith didn't mention it. She gave a really detailed presentation, uh, but we've also, we actually have 
uh, school custodians that are cleaning the shelter and cleaning the bathrooms and the showers um, as part of our effort to stand that shelter up. So those are additional costs. We've incurred some additional costs for technology um, to be able to facilitate uh, this new remote environment and getting um, getting people uh, spun up into uh, uh, working remote with software, hardware, um, uh, uh, electronic signature, other uh, sorts of things. Um, and then obviously there are costs related to the shelter that the city has stood up. We've obviously gotten uh, some, some great uh, contributions and there's been a great partnership with ServiceNet, uh, but the city has put upfront uh, funding uh, to get this uh, shelter off the ground. So, so in addition to the revenue shortfall, we also have a, a number of unbudgeted expenses uh, for COVID-19 that we again are tabulating um, and are having to absorb now in our budget and that hopefully we will see um, reimbursement uh, for us, hopefully 75% of those. So if you go on to the next slide. So impacts of COVID-19 on state aid. Um, as you know, Governor Baker uh, submitted his uh, budget back in January. Um, obviously, the world it was in a much different place back in January, and the somewhat um, optimistic outlook of the then uh, uh, revenue um, analysts and the Joint Revenue Committee that looked at um, what what revenue level the state could expect to build its budget has obviously changed. Um, and this is actually the next three slides are slides that I uh, borrowed from MMA. Um, I had a virtual meeting like this with all mayors across the state with the Secretary of Administration and Finance, uh, Heffernan, um, who basically was giving us um, their look. Unfortunately, uh, they do not have a, a clear picture that they can give us right now. This is around the time that the House of Representatives and the House Ways and Means Committee uh, would be releasing a, its version of the state budget. Obviously, um, they are adapting to this new environment, adapting to meeting remotely, um, and it's unclear when uh, they will release what they think will be um, the FY 2021 state budget. Um, but at the revenue hearing, they did hold a remote revenue hearing earlier this week um, where they hear, heard from a number of economists and, um, and think tanks and experts that they typically ask to testify. Um, the Mass Taxpayers Foundation uh, forecast about a 14.1% uh, decline or $4.4 billion um, uh, dollar loss of revenue um, that could force uh, cuts. Um, the, uh, it's unclear whether the legislature will uh, delay their budget process and not put out a budget, which will obviously make it challenging for uh, cities and towns um, to know what their aid, state aid numbers might be. Um, there's, as you see here, there, the state does have a strong uh, rainy day fund, um, and there are some federal uh, CARES Act monies which have arrived. So um, that's uh, one piece of the state revenue and budget outlook. If you can go to the next slide, Laura. There is some history, obviously. We went through the, the uh, Great Recession. Uh, this would have been back in the period between 2008 through 2011. Um, obviously, this was a period where uh, both federal, state, and local government uh, faced uh, drastic and severe cuts. Um, and in that case, uh, state tax revenues had dropped by over 10%. Um, unrestricted aid was cut by uh, more than 20%. Um, education aid was some not cut quite as deeply, and, and there had been a federal stimulus package that had been adopted uh, to try to pull the country out of the uh, deep recession it was in. And so education aid was um, uh, at least provided some support. Um, they did actually give us the new local option meals um, and excise tax, um, but obviously those are the types of revenues that are being threatened right now uh, by this crisis. Um, one of the big questions is whether the federal government will do a similar uh, stimulus package um, that, could, uh, that could help us, uh, states like Massachusetts that are facing these severe uh, revenue uh, shortfalls. Um, MMA is obviously working with the National League of Cities and, um, and we're working on uh, uh, trying to get legislation passed. There is a bill pending, um, HR 6467, which uh, 
has has several Massachusetts co-sponsors uh, that would try to provide direct aid to cities um, because without uh, federal aid, uh, the, the Massachusetts budget crisis is going to severe, be severe, and as is often the case, that will then uh, roll downhill to cities and towns um, and, uh, and will uh, worsen our outlook. You can go to the next slide. So um, again, we've review, we review these during budget time and we review them obviously more recently during the, um, you know, during the town hall meetings I held, but about 16.6% of the current FY20 budget uh, comes from state aid. It's about 15.8 million. Um, that includes our chapter 70 aid for education, unrestricted general government aid, uh, 4.7 million. Chapter 90 is not really part of our budget, but obviously chapter 90 is another form of state aid that has a significant impact on our ability to do, um, uh, to do uh, road reconstruction. So uh, that just kind of gives you a quick overview, again, as a refresher of what are these types of state aid uh, that could be impacted. Um, unfortunately, as I said, the state is not really providing a lot of information, including whether or not uh, mid-year cuts could be on the table. There is a mechanism, and this did occur uh, during the Great Recession uh, back in uh, 2008, 2009, where state aid, which had been budgeted, was cut uh, during the middle of the fiscal year, uh, which meant cities and towns had to scramble to basically trim their budgets uh, to account for the loss. Um, it did not sound like that was something that was being considered as they are now already into the, the first part of the, of the fourth quarter, um, but that could just mean that uh, the pain and the cuts might be coming um, in the 2021 budget. Uh, so that remains to be seen, and we'll be obviously keeping a close eye on the legislature and the House Ways and Means Committee to see uh, what they do in the coming weeks. Um, so that's the that's the status of the state and the state aid. Next slide. So uh, the FY 2021-2025 capital improvement program um, and what we would do in FY 2021. Um, the original uh, capital improvement program uh, was delayed as we were waiting for the outcome of the March 3rd Proposition 2.5 override, um, which was then literally followed um, the following Tuesday by the governor declaring a state of emergency and uh, you know the rest of the story. Um, we're now delaying it because we're just we, we, we need to understand what the budget projections are relative to those local receipts I talked about and state aid. Um, and, um, and wanting to obviously be able to preserve our financial capacity. Um, obviously we have a debt schedule that can be revised to sort of lower some of the debt service to create more operating budget capacity in FY 2021. Um, and likely we will just uh, projects um, and associated uh, borrowing would just be delayed um, so that we could free up that capacity. Um, my approach for FY 2021 will be to um, uh, present a very limited capital uh, projects, and these would only be for critical uh, time sensitive projects, and we would essentially push out any other projects out into future uh, years. Um, so that's going to be our approach because obviously, given the uncertainty of our um, operating uh, budget um, and the ability to fund capital either through cash capital or to cover expanded debt service from the budget. Um, it seems prudent that we um, use, implement a very austere approach to capital um, improvements uh, for fiscal year 2021. Next slide. So the fiscal uh, 2021 budget, again, as I mentioned, it's, uh, it, it is uh, due to you in 75 days. Now here's, a here's an old chestnut slide that I showed many times at town hall meetings in recent months. Um, where we talked about our efforts to rebuild our um, stabilization funds. Um, and I often pointed out that after the Great Recession, our stabilization funds were had diminished down to a little over $4,000 um, and that we've worked really hard to rebuild them over time. Obviously, I got a lot of questions and a lot of concern during those um, uh, town hall meetings about the size of our uh, stabilization funds and the percentages we were using. Um, and as I tried to express um, at the time, the purpose of these uh, funds are for 
uh, the types of unforeseen emergencies and crises that unfortunately we find ourselves in now, uh, particularly in the middle of, a, of an economic crisis and a recession and the potential deep loss of local revenues and potential uh, deep cuts to state revenues. So the current status of our, of our stabilization funds, the fiscal stability stabilization fund is at 2.9 million, uh, the capital stabilization fund is at 3.8 million, and we have 5.1 um, in our stabilization fund. So obviously those will be um, things that we will be looking at as we look to build budgets um, out into the future as ways to try to potentially lessen um, some of the pain. Obviously, we don't want to overly rely on them because we want to make them last. Um, and we also uh, don't want, to, we know that when, if you use a lot and then there's no more left, then you're faced with even deeper cuts. So, um, so you know, our, 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 our prudence in making sure that we rebuilt our funds after the last recession um, unfortunately have paid off. I, I had hoped that we would not have to, to face this type of situation, but this sort of illustrates in real time why these stabilization funds are critical. So we'll be looking at, uh, at those as ways to help um, support parts of our budget going forward potentially. Next slide. So uh, now just looking ahead to the first quarter, and again, this is just looking ahead to the first quarter of FY 2021 and the potential impacts. And again, we turn to um, looking at many of these local, uh, local revenues and again, paying attention to the dates in question. So the first quarter revenues for uh, hotel, motel, meals, and adult use marijuana are actually for May, June, and July. Um, so literally, uh, you know, for hotel motel, uh, May, June, and July are probably our biggest months in terms of uh, revenue. Obviously, commencement uh, for the five college commencement season um, and the start of summer are some of the biggest months um, of the year. And, and hoteliers will tell you that uh, it's those months that help sustain them and even out the rest of the year. So, uh, we're looking, unfortunately, if the current crisis continues and our hotels are essentially shuttered right now, um, that we're looking at significant reductions in revenues there. Um, we, we're making some projections about, um, our, about lost revenue in the other two categories, uh, parking, parking tickets, um, recreation revenues, which obviously provide a certain percentage of revenues to the general fund. Um, you know, spring sports are obviously not going to be happening. It's unclear whether camps will be happening or be allowed to happen. Um, continuing the ambulance revenue, um, we, if there's no change and that stays on course, we could see, uh, you know, another $300,000 um, uh, of lost revenue in ambulance. Um, and then continuing on uh, permits, uh, building, wiring, et cetera. Um, Medicaid from schools, that's a reimbursement program. Um, that may or may not be um, uh, uh, available. And then obviously interest on investments, um, interest rates are uh, quite low right now. So we, we are, and seem to be dropping. So we probably will see lower invest, uh, interest on the monies that we have um, in, in savings and investments. So right now uh, looking, you know, where we sit right now, we are looking at a potential estimated lost revenue for the first quarter, again, this is just the first quarter of 2021, of about $1.5 million um, of what we, had been, uh, what we had been projecting as we were looking ahead to FY 2021. And again, that's just local revenue. When you look at reductions in state aid, um, that's a whole other piece of this that we really don't have any clear uh, numbers on. You know, we can, we can, we can apply some of the, you know, the Mass Taxpayers uh, Foundation uh, number of, you know, 14% uh, percent drop, um, and think about, you know, what that might do to our local revenues. And again, that could be for the year could be an additional, you know, one and a half to two million dollar uh, drop in revenues um, from state government. So um, serious uh, loss of revenue. And again, that's just the first quarter. Um, depending on how long this crisis continues um, and, uh, and how long some of these sectors of the economy 
are closed or um, even when they're reopened, um, how much time it will take um, uh, for them to rebound and rebuild and, uh, and what businesses may not reopen and be lost as part of, uh, as part of this uh, shutdown. So these are some of the, the things that we're thinking about as we try to build a 2021 budget. Next slide. So expenditures, obviously we will be um, looking to uh, very carefully at the 2021 budget and fully expecting that we are going to have to make significant uh, reductions to account for those lost revenues. Um, and so um, again, and, and also keeping in mind that we will most likely uh, be continuing to incur ongoing COVID-19 um, expenses uh, potentially you know, into, into uh, July and August um, that may still need to happen as we move out of this. Um, we will also need to be looking at uh, reductions or eliminations of some services or programs and departments um, will likely mean we will not fill vacant positions. We may need to do staff reductions um, across the general fund uh, since 73% of the general fund budget is salaries. Um, uh, there, may, there, there would be a corresponding reduction in employee benefits um, as part of those staff reductions. Um, so that would also create some savings. Um, the Northampton Public Schools, um, uh, we just adopted our budget for FY 2021 on Monday um, and the superintendent, um, I think very prudently um, uh, during the middle of their budget process when the COVID-19 emergency uh, struck, uh, made some significant changes uh, to their budget and actually revised it downward in terms of the size of um, the budget and what was being uh, what was being proposed, knowing that the city uh, was going to be facing these challenges. Um, and again, those are those are um, a, a downward revision that again was made with. Um, information that we know now, we don't know what's going to happen with state aid and with education aid. Um, there's talk about whether or not the Student Opportunity Act will actually be implemented or not. Um, and so, um, so obviously we may see some reductions in our schools. Um, we may need to cut back on our annual contribution to the stabilization fund and the cash capital uh, projects. And obviously we talked about the debt service reduction. So these are some of the things that we're gonna be looking at very carefully as we try to build the 2021 budget. Um, but um, when you look at those revenue uh, reductions uh, uh, at a, you know, 1.5 million a quarter just in local revenue, uh, that is significant. And, uh, and so we need to be prepared to make, um, take significant steps in building the FY 2021 budget uh, to be able to balance the budget. So next slide. So the other thing that, um, that I wanna talk about or announce is the fact that uh, as we know, uh, March 3rd, 2020, uh, the voters adopted the Proposition 2.5 override, um, authorizing us to raise an additional $2.5 million in revenue uh, to support city and school services for the fiscal year that was to begin, the beginning July 1st, 2020. Um, as I mentioned earlier, one week later on March 10th, uh, Governor Baker declared a state of emergency um, and that public health crisis has created massive economic disruption, record unemployment, um, and an almost certain recession. Um, so given the uncertain duration of the COVID-19 crisis and the severe economic stress facing Northampton residents, including many who are now furloughed or laid off from jobs, we have local businesses that have been forced to close because of the shutdown. I feel that we cannot in good conscience implement a voter authorized property inc tax increase in just over two months. So my plan is to submit a proposed FY 2021 budget that would forego, forego the use of that 2.5 million in additional revenue. And I would delay implementation of the override until FY 2022. Uh, that begins on July 1st of 2021. Um, so we would need to uh, uh, revise our plans and our estimates and the multi-year plans uh, that we made. Um, again, uh, we are in the middle of a public health crisis. Many people are out of work. Uh, many people are experiencing severe financial uh, distress. 
Um, and so to um, move forward at this time uh, does, not, uh, does not seem like the right thing for us to be doing. So I am going to delay it and, um, and bring it um, and not bring that additional revenue online for one year on July 1st of 2021. So that is a very quick overview of what is going to be a very long and uh, complicated uh, next several weeks between now and May 15th um, as we try to, uh, uh, first of all, keep a close eye on the FY 2020 budget, um, but also uh, uh, try to craft uh, an FY 2021 budget uh, that anticipates uh, this recession that we're in and the severe impact that we'll be experiencing in both local and potentially state revenue. So that is my presentation and I'll open it up to questions. Thank you very much, Mayor Narkowitz. I'm not at all sure how amidst all of this, your office was able to put together such a, a detailed and extensive presentation, but we certainly thank you for it. Well, um, uh, Susan Wright um, uh, can, is, is uh, you know, we've been Zoom conferencing all week and reviewing drafts. And so thank you to Susan, obviously, who's been helping pull together these numbers and these estimates um, and incorporating all the information. So uh, yes, it, it was, um, it was a uh, PowerPoint by Zoom conference, so. <laughs> Well, thank you, and thank you, Susan. Um, and it uh, it was as concerning a presentation as I uh, I feared it would be. Um, so I know that there are a lot of questions. I have uh, some myself, but I will um, let the other counselors ask first. They'll probably get to my question as well. I, um, first up, I see Councillor Thorpe, then Councillor DeBarge, and then I know that Councillor Dwight. Thank you. And thank you, Mayor, for making that presentation. Uh, you already answered one of the questions I was going to ask and that we are dealing, uh, the city is dealing with uh, increased expenditures. But I also would like to uh, thank you for um, notifying everyone, especially those who are watching about the delayed implementation that you're considering of the Prop 2.5 override. And I've heard from constituents who were concerned, who were laid off about how this going to impact them. And uh, I appreciate you mentioning this tonight. And that's all I really have to say for right now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, it was Councillor Labarge and then Councillor Dwight. Thank you, Councillor Shearer. Um, Mayor, I want to thank you for this very thorough presentation and Susan Wright also. And I know because I had emailed the mayor, which Councillor Shearer knows, of the great concerns that I've had from people with emails and calling me on my phone about how they're laid off, they depend on two paychecks in order to pay their mortgages and so forth and the food on the table for their children and about the prop proposition two and a half. If for some reason that we could have a moratorium placed on the prop two and a half. And this is dreadful here of what's happening and to see that our mayor and Susan has put in a very thorough, thorough budget here is that hopefully within that year, with not having that prop two and a half, many people will be able to go back to work and get back on their feet because I can't tell you how bad it is in this city right now. I mean, people talking to me, losing their jobs and families, it's awful. But thank you both, Mayor and Susan, for the excellent presentation and all the work that you have done to present this tonight. Thank you, Councillor Dwight and Councillor Nash. Um, Your Honor, I'm, I'm not the least bit surprised uh, in your very thorough and anticipatory. Um, <laughs> the, the way you and your staff have anticipated uh, how to proceed in this crisis as it changes moment to moment. But I'm also, I, I think it's in keeping with everything else that you've done. Uh, you, you have actually, uh, I, I'm impressed beyond a proper way to express it. So 
I do have a question relative to um, the uh, uh, moratorium, as it were. What are the protocols? I'm not sure. I mean, I, you know, this is unprecedented, and I, uh, you as in the executive, you're, uh, you have the authority to actually uh, declare essentially a deferment on a on a on a on a voter initiative. And also, does it require anything of the council ultimately? So um, that's a good question, and I know um, I, I I know I had a conversation, some communication with Councillor Jared about that as well. Am I did I unmute? Sometimes I don't unmute. No, you're, Sorry you're about good. that. Um, so um, in, we've 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 checked with the Department of Revenue and their legal department. So essentially, you know, when when the voters granted us this authority to raise this additional 2.5 million, um, they gave us the authority to do that, um, and so they basically raised our overall tax levy. Um, and so we, um, but but they gave us the authority, um, but they do not. That does not mean that um, in any given year, when you um, um, file a budget, that you have to use your full tax levy capacity. So um, we've run this by them. Um, and that's a fair, that's a, that's a sort of um, a, an authority as part of local municipal uh, budget authority um, that we are able to utilize. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm wiping away the election result because the election result passed. And in the eyes of the Department of Revenue, we have an additional 2.5 million in uh, revenue levy capacity. What I'm saying is that as mayor, um, I'm going to submit a budget that doesn't fully, that doesn't utilize that additional 2.5 million um, in this fiscal year. I will not do that until the next fiscal year. Um, so again, they've, the additional revenue is authorized. Uh, we are not going to, essentially we're not going to tap it until July 1st of 2021. So that, that's, and so the budget process, so the council Obviously, would be approving a budget um, that would uh, that would you know that would not have that additional 2.5 million in revenue um, as part of it. Um, we would th th we would still have that 2.5 million. Um, you may have heard people say it's there forever um, in terms of uh, levy capacity. Um, so it is there, and so we would not tap it until next year. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Nash. Thank you. Um, so, Mayor, I you know I, I remember stopping by your office on March fourth, and um, to ask a question, and your door was closed, and, and the word from the staff in your office is, the mayor is meeting all day with administrators to plan the budget. That's the day after the override, and you were in the process of implementing, at that point, you didn't know if you're gonna have an override or not. And you finally got the word go from the voters on March 3rd, and, and you had a week where you were implementing that budget. And then a week later, you knew you were gonna to have to redo that budget. And the, the uh, I, I, I have to say, I'm so impressed with the assessment that uh, you and finance director Right, we're able to pull together for us tonight. I would, I was expecting basically the, you know, uh, a dire a finance director to share the quarterly reports, and you know, it's looking bad. I, I did um, this level of detail is is super impressive. So I, I want to thank you for that, and um, and that I, it's amazing how nimble you guys have been to be able to pull this together. Um, on, in this crisis, and um, so I, I want to thank you. Um, yes, I, I, I want... just, I, I just, I do want to say though. I just, when you say in this detail, I, I just, I tried to preface this. These are our, these are our best estimates right now. Oh, I, like, I get that. There are some things we know, like we know revenue shortfalls that are happening in 2020, um, but these are still just estimates from us. Um, right. And that's you know that's what a budget is in many ways. But so I I just want to caution people that you know these numbers may change. The House may announce something next week. Um, uh, there may be some new federal money. But um, so I just want to. I that's the only cautionary thing about putting numbers on a page. But 
but but I appreciate that. And I will say that we have um, we've been having Zoom depart uh, departmental budget meetings all week um, with um, uh, all the various department heads to basically go back um, and say, okay, this is the budget we were talking about. Um, you know, beginning in December, January, February. Um, now we need to go back and and look at some other scenarios um, and where can we cut and where are possible ways that we could reduce it. So we are even in this environment, we're having those departmental budget meetings. Thank you. And yes, I realize that there's a lot of moving parts here, but that that you guys have have your eyes on those things. I, I really appreciate that. Um, Thank you. I also appreciate that um, that the, the work we've done around uh, building the reserve funds for, for the, you know, over the last 10 years, that they're there for us now to help us weather this crisis. And I agree with you that this is this is a time to this is what they're there for. And we need to be frugal with them. But I, I, I really appreciate all of the work that we've done to build that up. Um, so I have two questions and you may or may not know the answer. Uh, one has to do, I, I don't know where the bonding for North Farms Road uh, reconstruction stands. Is that being put off for a year? Um, we, um, we had already approved that, I think back in the previous council. I, do you know where that stands or is that a detail? Um, I think our, our plan had been, um, because of the timing of that project, and I'll have this, the finance director talk about it. I think our plan had been to not do that bonding until um, until uh, the fall, but I'll let the finance director uh, tell me if that's still the thinking or not. Yeah, the um, the one point five million that we uh, that council authorized in October, um, the DPW director will not be actually incurring any expenses related that to that until July. So our plan changed and we decided to bond next spring for that. And our first debt payment on that will be due in FY22 instead of FY21. Thank you. So the design work is moving forward on that project and we're trying to figure out how how the heck it could be bid in this environment. Um, so we're, they're still working on that. Um, so that, that project could potentially go forward, um, but we wouldn't actually have to go out to bond till, uh, till next year on it. And, and thank you. And my last question has to do with something that's outside of our budget that has to do with uh, the rebuild of exit 19 in Damon Road. Um, and that you may not know the answer tonight, but I'll be, um, since one of those projects is in my ward and the other one abuts it, I, I'm going to be really interested in how those two are gonna be funded as we move forward through this, um, this crisis. Yeah, I mean, those, those, um, those projects um, have, um, have already money locked into them as part of the, the transportation improvement program um, that's already been authorized. Um, you've obviously, we've got an order tonight for some final easements um, for Damon Road. Um, the state is still is planning to put Damon Road out to bid in May, um, which is part of the reason why we need these easements, uh, um, these final easements that we're accepting for the railroad uh, uh, in two readings. Um, and King Street is planning to go out to bid in June. Um, that's the timetable that the state is under. Um, and then um, we're, there's, they're even moving forward with North King Street and Hatfield. So at least at the state level, these projects are gonna continue. Um, obviously they've had to adapt their, their uh, practices uh, to maintain safety, but you know, outdoor construction of this kind, it seems like that um, will continue and the state is still on track to get those projects out. So. Um, that's, that's what I know at this point. Thank you. Okay, I've got uh, Councillor Quinlan, then Councillor LaBarge, I see you. So Councillor Quinlan, then Councillor LaBarge, then Councillor Mayori. So Councillor Quinlan. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Mayor and Susan, uh, for the uh, uh, honest and sobering look at our city budget with a realistic eye towards the future. Um, I wanna mention that I think your uh, delay of the implementation of the override plus talking about 
tapping into the uh, stabilization funds uh, shows a real compassion for the city people in need. Uh, and I think, it, to be completely frank with you, I think that's why the override passed because people appreciate the fact that you look at it realistically and with compassion for the residents. So I, I congratulate you on that and I thank you for it. Um, I also would like to echo what Councillor Nash said that I'd love to just make sure that because a lot of the projects that we're discussing here, road work that's coming up is in Ward 1. Uh, so I'd love to make sure that I've kept abreast of those projects as well as they're you know, either moving forward or delaying, however, uh, whatever the cases may be. And then I had two questions. Um, one is I realize it's not part of the general fund, but I'm wondering about the host community funds at the adult use marijuana with them being cl closed right now. Uh, do these months get added to the end of the 60 months or do we, are we just getting 3% of zero at this point? Yeah, that's a really interesting concept. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, the, the law says that it's, um, you know, that it's five years from the start of operation commencement. Right. Um, I'm sure the cannabis commission will be looking at that. Um, obviously they don't have revenue coming in, so it's, you're right. It's 3% of nothing. Um, that'll have to be, I guess, an interpretation that the, the, uh, CCC will have to provide as to whether, you know, those, this time period goes into some kind of a stasis and that we then resume. Um, obviously medical is still, uh, moving forward and there's yeah. no tax revenue, but we do have a small host agreement with them on, on medical, although that's coming close to an end because we're almost hard to believe um, entering our fifth year of having medical right. uh, marijuana. So, yeah, so that's one of the many, um, I guess, unanswered question that we'll have to find out about um, in, in the days and months ahead. And then the other question that I had was, uh, as, as we see these projections, um, and in the state that the city's in, in, in terms of, of, of office being closed, people working from home, have we, have we laid anyone off? Have we furloughed any city employees at this point? We have not, we have not. Um, we, have, um, we have taken the position and the schools have taken the position and obviously we've had conversations with our uh, uh, collective bargaining units about this that um, you know the, the budget uh, that, that we, we understand that our employees are in the middle of the same crisis and um, we are working and many of them are working, they're just working remotely. Um, and, um, and in some ways, figuring are, are being reassigned to other tasks um, or, um, you know, finding other ways that they can serve um, their constituency. I just, I think this week, the Arts Council uh, uh, basically took a vote to, to basically turn their grant funds into an emergency fund for artists and to try to help support artists who are largely self-employed. Um, our senior services are doing uh, a lot of outreach work. Our rec department is trying to help people not go insane and, and find ways to recreate, um, given the fact that there's no camps, there's no leagues, there's none of those things. So, um, so yeah, we haven't had any. And, and so at least through the end of uh, fiscal um, 20, um, although, again, as we look at these revenues start to drop off, um, there may be cases where we, put a, where we uh, freeze hiring um, in some cases and look at positions that are vacant that may end up being eliminated going forward. And there may have to be eliminations in FY 2021. Uh, but obviously, so right now, um, right now, uh, all of our employees are continuing to uh, be paid. Um, but that will all have to be reassessed in this new environment as we move into 2021. Sure. Uh, thank you very much. Hey, Count Councillor Labarge. Thank you, Councillor Shearer. Um, Mayor, I should have asked this before, which is important to me, and I would assume Councillor Shearer also being on the committee for the CDBG interviewing and reading on your presentation that I think it stated 35% of cities might not be getting funded. Have, is our city going to be affected with that? Um, I guess I'm, I'm not quite sure of the reference there. Um, so it said on the, oh, this was, um, this was in the um, MMA slides, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think that was basically a reference to the fact that 
there is a there's a large cohort of cities that don't get CDBG funding. So like um, even locally, West Springfield does not receive CDBG funding. So um, so I think that was what the reference was to that the fact that even though CDBG this new CDBG money is going out there. If you're a community that doesn't already receive CDBG money, you're not going to get any. So I think that's what the reference was to. So you know, Northampton did receive an, uh, an, ex an extra allotment under the CDBG CARES uh, federal allotment. Um, that was, I think, referring to communities that don't receive CDBG already. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay, Councillor Mayori. Yeah. So thank you, Mayor. I, um, I was having this vision when you were talking of someone building a beautiful sandcastle and then someone just coming and just destroying mm -hmm. it. And then you immediately start just building a new one. And I, I appreciate your tenacity. I think that's a, you know, such a sign of great leadership. Um, I appreciate that. And I think we all know these are estimates. And even if it's just kind of bringing breaking it to us slowly. Um, and we know that can change or maybe there'll be some pleasant surprises, but uh, I really appreciate your responsiveness and groundedness. Um, I just wanted to, and also I just really wanna say that I think we're, we're you know, I, personally I always knew kind of the importance of a stabilization fund, but I, I don't think any of us were, are ever gonna really forget after this experience, how that can really play out and how that can make the difference in a municipal, municipality in terms of surviving. Um, just a minor question. And I had a question for rep resident. Um, I'm confirming that the tax relief um, for seniors uh, program that we expanded is in play and active now. Um, so that actually um, was going into effect July 1st. July 1st. Um, okay. So yeah, so we were implementing that July 1st. There was an extension of um, as part of the governor's uh, bill that he filed, uh, that, that was passed, that allowed me to extend all of the various deadlines for property taxes, et cetera. Um, I, I believe that did also extend the deadline for filing for exemptions. Um, that includes some of the seat, which you typically oh. are due in April. Those got extended into the same, I think, June 1st. Um, give me a nod, Susan, if that's right. Yes, yes okay, good. Um, and that was all part of that big uh, press release. I don't know how many press releases ago where we listed the different dates and how they've been extended. Those are also on the COVID-19 page. They're also on the treasurer collector's page, but the new limits um, went in, are, were going into effect on July 1st as well. Um, okay. okay. And those were voted on by the city council. So um, those are not, um, those would, are not being delayed. Okay, great, thank you. Other questions for Mayor Narkowitz? So, and, and again, uh, this is the time that Susan Wright would, uh, this meeting, she would typically present the third quarters and you have them, but you know, as you saw in the presentation, the, the you know, the, the COVID-19 impacts are really, you don't really see a much of it happening on any of those third quarters. It's gonna be the fourth quarter uh, report or the end of year fourth quarter is where we're gonna see the big impact. So, but but Susan's available to go through them as, as well or point out, uh, answer questions about them. Um, okay, so uh, counselors, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at those reports um, and if you have some questions for Susan. Um, or, or if you want, I don't know if Susan wants to just give a quick overview. I mean, there, there's really not a whole lot to um, tell you. Um, as the mayor said, the third quarter is somewhat um, shielded from impact, um, except for parking and a few the other things we put on that slide. I think the uh, difference in the percentage of revenues received this third quarter versus last year at this time is mostly a timing issue. Um, a lot of revenues um, get booked every month and because staff vacated their offices in the first week or so was really spent trying to figure out how to do these functions remotely. Um, a lot of things didn't get put into the accounting system. So some of the revenues that you see there um, are not fully what we actually received in this quarter. So. In general, there's really nothing remarkable. The, the um, enterprise funds are um, doing quite well. Uh, 
all of the, they have met all of their revenue targets. Um, the general fund, as, a, as the mayor pointed out, is slightly below, but I think that's partially a timing issue and some of it's the majorly the parking um, because we lost two weeks of parking revenue. Um, in terms of expenditures, uh, there are, um, again, the um, payroll impacts of the COVID-19 uh, emergency haven't really hit in the third quarter. Most of that will hit in the fourth quarter. So in terms of the financials, there's really nothing remarkable to point out to you. Um, and we'll have a much more robust discussion when the fourth quarter comes out. Okay, thank you. Um, any any questions or comments for Susan on on that? Okay, seeing none. 